wanted to highlight this insanity from Laura Ingram's show last night. She spoke to Steve Milloy, who is I, 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 some some crank. <laughs> I guess he's that's, a respectable man on the Laura Ingram program. Okay, well, he's he is wearing a tie, not particularly well. Um, looks a little crooked, but you know, I, I'm not the. What the tie? Or? I'm not. I'm not the the. <laughs> what's that leftist guy on Twitter who critiques oh, uh, right wing fashion? Workwear? Yeah, I, so, so I, I can't speak to it, but um. So per, per Wikipedia, Steve Malloy um, is the founder and editor of JunkScience.com. Mm. And oh, his, climate. And his career has spent been spent disputing the science government agencies rely on for protecting the public. Right. Yeah, so you'll see a lot of that here, and that's why Laura Ingram uh, brought him on, because yesterday and into today, tens of millions of people in um, the Northeast and the Mid-Atlantic were essentially under air quality alerts, and the severity here in New York City was a as bad as it got, I think, in the country. We had an AQI the, of 484. Yeah, off the uh, charts, like at 300, I think, is where they say, like, hey, it's t hazardous to be outside. Yeah, um, and, and other areas surrounding the city also had some really hazardous air, uh, air quality. Uh, it, apparently, Eric Adams said at the press conference it was the worst that it's been since the 1960s, the highest... Uh, or like worst air quality level recorded like since that time. But here is uh, Laura Ingram's guest, Steve Malloy, to tell you that it's actually no biggie. Look, the air is ugly, it's unpleasant to breathe, and for a lot of people they get uh, anxiety over it. But the reality is there's no health risk. Okay, there's uh, EPA research. They've done lots of clinical research on uh, asthmatics, on elderly asthmatics, on children, on elderly with heart disease. Um, not a cough or a wheeze from any of them. We have this kind of air in India and China all the time. Um, no public health emergency. Speaking of, do you, do you notice like in all the coverage of, you know, Bill Ware, the tailpipes, all this stuff? They never, ever mentioned the fact at the top that China is the number one polluter in the world. Never. Yeah, this Wait, is hold on, though. In China. Pause it for a sec. So what is it? Is it a bad thing that there's pollution or is the good thing that yeah, there's pollution? Like, we understand. Then why are we hitting on China if it's actually no biggie? Yeah. And there's no quality. Let's pull up these, these statistics that we have here. Go ahead, Matt. Um, I mean, this is just from one uh, statistic. Like in... 2017, 1.24 million people died in China. Yeah. <laughs> according to air pollution. India world. is the second in this. Uh, this is done by the University of Chicago. They have an air quality life index arm. And, you know, University of Chicago, not known to be a Marxist leftist organization. Yeah. Um, they, here, India, uh, two out of uh, ranks, like second worst, essentially, in terms of pollution. Mm -hmm. And you see there. Five years gained in life expectancy, potentially, if the air quality yeah, the index kind of is met. Studies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Scroll down even more here with India, because this is just absolutely absurd. Um, India is today the world's second most polluted country. Air pollution shortens the average Indian life expectancy by 6.3 years. Yeah, 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 India and China are fine, right? <laughs> Relative to what it would be if the World Health Organization guideline was met, uh, 3.4 years relative to it, what it would be if pollution were reduced to meet the country's own right. national standard. Now go to China here. China's actually improved recently. There are nine out of, uh, nine out of 240 nice. at this point, but they, uh, so if air pollution was to be reduced to WHO guidelines, it would be a 2.6 uh, yearly gain in life expectancy. Right if it were to be met and um so and just to clarify like what laura ingram is alluding to like why are people they they bend over backwards to apologize about china the thing about china and like um, fossil fuel consumption for instance is like yeah like at, at presently they emit a lot it's a massive country and they are industrializing which we had the benefit to do and so like it's not a real uh, uh it's not a real comparison to say hey we're a lot uh, cleaner in terms of our industries because we've de-industrialized and been through all that and you we have also have less population and per capita historically before we have implemented some incredibly threadbare climate standards, the United States per capita was the worst polluter in the world. For years, for, for decades. <laughs> so now let's go back to this because it's both like not a problem if China pollutes and also let's hit China on it, according to Laura Ingram. 
You know, I mean, it's really bad. Uh, the, you know, they, in the winter, they never turn on their scrubbers for their air pollution because they don't care. Weir has no Wait, idea what Can you go back like 10 about. seconds? I just want to see how a oh, former Trump era transition team climate person. That makes total sense. I just want to get to that part where she brings up China. In on elderly with heart disease, um, not a cough or a wheeze from any of them. We have this kind of air in India and China all the time. Um, no public health emergency. Speaking of, do you know? Sorry, do you sorry just pause it real hole. quick. No public health emergency. That is a political choice mm -hmm. to ignore the actual impacts. Okay, go ahead. All the coverage of, you know, Bill Ware, the tailpipes, all this. They never, ever mentioned the fact at the top that China is the number one polluter in the world. Never. Yeah, this is like clean air in China. I mean, it's really bad. Uh, the, you know, they, in the winter, they never turn Wait, on what? their scrubbers for their air pollution because they don't care. Weir has no idea what he's talking about. This doesn't kill anybody. This doesn't make anybody cough. This is not a right. health event. This has got nothing to do with climate. First off, these, this is wildfire smoke. This is natural. This is not because of climate change. Oh, trials. my it's God. Not, Pause it again. It is 100% due to climate change. This is a really difficult concept for uh, Steve Malloy, so I'm going to break it down for him. There are going to be more wildfires as the globe heats up because the forests become more dried out and the brush lights on fire more easily. So you'll see more wildfires, more intense wildfires, and wildfires in regions that typically wouldn't experience them during this time. Yeah. So it's ex completely related like, to climate They're like, change. oh yeah, it's just the, like, um, climate change, if it happens, which I'm not admitting it will, if it does, it'll just mean the, the, the ecology will change. Like, how do you think that happens? Yeah. Where do you think those trees go? Do you think they just, like disappear or do you think like the new heat like might create a combustible atmosphere and he cited the epa one so let's go to that as a source multiple studies have found that climate change has already led to an increase in wildfire season length wildfire frequency and burned area <laughs> to make anybody i'm sorry cough this is not a health event this has got nothing to do with climate first off these this is wildfire smoke this is natural this is not because of climate change it's <laughs> not amazing. because of the fossil fuel you know uh internal combustion engines he just has no idea what he's talking about um all day by the way it seemed like the media figures that we've become accustomed to seeing on television during these crises they seemed like they were back in their element and in, in kind of um almost enjoying the moment of wearing masks masks again, <laughs> didn't they? They seem to have a little pep in their step with those masks. Now, they talked Sporotic. about the dangers of something called particulate matter yeah. from the smoke. Here's CNN earlier. Consider wearing a mask, and that is because of the particulate matter in the air. This is among the tiniest, most dangerous kind of pollutants, and it's the kind of thing found in this wildfire smoke. These are these particular these particles are so small they can get into the lungs Mass and breathe them in, manipulation. get into the bloodstream, like and cause all kinds of health issues. Steve, we're back at the masks. <laughs> Ramin Asqui is watching from heaven, by the way. Ramin, I know you are. Go ahead. Yeah, this is crazy. This is all particulate matter, but particulate matter was not a concern until EPA invented it. It was one in the 1990s, and they've been writing it. You know, the Obama administration, now the Biden administration. Well, what it's is it? Total, is total, it a health concern? Part, no, particulate matter is very fine soot. Um, <laughs> well, you don't want just, to be breathing that just, in all well, day. They're just carbon particles. They're, they're just, yeah. Okay, by them, they're innocuous. There's nothing in them. Even uh, they have no effect. The EPA has all this testing Just on real life human beings. It shows no effect. This is total junk science. Yeah, oh my God, man. Psycho. How do you live with yourself? I mean, remember chimney sweeps, Laura? Yeah. <laughs> they the, were fine. I mean, Just soot. I mean, carbon. <laughs> the black lung, totally invented by the woke left. I mean, I know that's a different thing, but there's a reason no, the that people shit. experience health hazards. And it's because, and but, yeah. but it is the same thing in that instance, right? Yeah. That's more localized to workers in mines, but these are all like the damaging effects of our addiction to fossil fuels and other polluters and people are gonna bear the brunt of it and already are in terms of body counts health hazards deaths and this is just a propaganda effort to downplay it even laura ingram's like should we be breathing in soot, soot? oh yeah. there's nothing wrong with it I no guarantee problem you, i guarantee you neither of them spent a significant amount of time outdoors yesterday uh if they did they had a mask on oh no like, town car to fox town car to home exactly and like the idea that <laughs> I, I saw even like some like supposedly lefty people saying 
and like, oh, you guys love the mask now. If you were here, you can feel it in your throat, even if you're inside. Mm -hmm. You can definitely feel it when you go outside. The idea that, okay, I have these masks around. I'm just going to leave that alone. Like, you are the more, you are the, like, the, the yes. sheep. You are the morons. You guys that, are, we're, we're, there's no smugness about the mask. I wore I the mask outside. This. Yes, I wore a KN95. I went to the gym and I walked in. And even when I was wearing my KN95 and I was indoors, I could still feel heaviness in my breath yeah, now, because of being out in the soot air. Do I think it's going to kill me? No, I, th I I trust the like sort of estimates that say that's like basically being out there like in, in, a, in that environment in an hour is similar to smoking a, a cigarette. Yeah. I believe that, right? I still don't want to just have that in my lungs. Like, it's just ridiculous. Please give me a mouthful of this just because it's nature. I don't want to be like these mask wearing well, uh, diaper face cheap. Well, that's because you're idiots. a soft little soy boy liberal who doesn't want soot in their lungs. Last thing to put up from this you chicago oh, yeah. thing this this final because the, uh, guys uh, we're having fun with this but this is our going to be the new normal <laughs> in in a climate change world um we've already passed the point of no return for a lot of these effects but this is the kind of um effect that particulate pollution has here the uh university of chicago aqli says uh, working unseen inside the human body, particulate pollution has more devastating impact on life expectancy than communicable diseases like tuberculosis and HIV AIDS, behavioral killers like cigarette smoking and even war. I mean, the, the, I don't know about that war point exactly because it's difficult to quantify. But like there you see smoking. It's less than when uh the PM two point uh, point two five relative to WHO yeah. standards. No, this is propaganda for polluters. This isn't. This is disguised as like some sort of media critique, and we're like, look at the pathologies of liberals. But this is yeah. like this is like basically straight from Koch brothers type right. of uh, yeah. like, like the attack. The type of people who are funding the attack on the EPA um, through like the courts and stuff like that. That's the exact same people who are putting the words in these two cretins' mouth.